13-year-old boy is missing at sea. The coast between Māori Bay and Muriwai has been scanned. The last hope, Māori Bay itself. An IRB and jet ski are on the job. When they get into a small inlet, a huge relief. A surfer is the hero. He's paddled out and rescued the distressed boy. But the lad has taken in a lot of water, so the rescue is only half over. You're right down, you're right on it. There you go. Yeah, we've found a, a surfer supporting a swimmer um, in between slope rock and sugar. Uh, we're just going to proceed him in the boat. Over. Yeah, come back, guys. The IRB rushes into Mouldy Bay to assess their victim. Young Falaniko is embraced by his family. The boy's nauseous, having problems breathing and could suffer secondary drowning, a life-threatening condition. The crew decides he needs medical attention urgently. Back at base, Dave rolls the medic team. Yeah, copy that. The truck will be standing by. Did you catch that? Truck, truck, truck. They're going to bring the patient back via IRB. Um... Falaniko is rushed back to Mutiwai. and immediately taken to the clubhouse recovery room. Okay, and we're just going to go into the first stage room here. Are you feeling dizzy or anything at the moment? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Swallow some water. Lifeguard Ross Pounds treats the boy. Fanika? My name's Ross. I'm a lifeguard also. I'm just not on duty today. You swallow some water? Can I get worked in the surf? No. You cold now? How, how does it feel to breathe? Feel all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to your lungs and just see if I can hear if there's any water in there, okay? What the lifeguards do is they put some oxygen on you. Okay, this is oxygen. This is going to make you feel better, all right? Falaniko's father arrives from Moldy Bay and is hugely grateful. I think he's just a bit shook up more than anything. Said he swallowed some water, but his lungs sound pretty good. It sounds like he's got a lot of water in there. But that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're concerned with. If you swallow water and you get water in your lungs, sometimes that can be kind of dangerous. The shock of the whole event, more than anything, is, is kind of got him. That's why we've got him on oxygen. Thank you very much. It's decided a watchful eye for the next few hours is best. <coughs> he tells you he's feeling sick. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't look right, mm -hmm. if he's not feeling well, you just take him straight to the hospital. Sounds like mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very welcome. So we're just, just keeping an eye on him. He's just said that he aspirated some water, swallowed some water. His lungs sound pretty good. Doesn't sound like he has any water in there, so there's not an ambulance coming right now. Um, he's feeling a little bit better with the oxygen on him, so we'll just keep an eye on him. And I just talked to his dad about really keeping a close eye on him over the next 24 hours to make sure his condition either stays the same or gets better. So if he does deteriorate, he goes straight to the hospital. Most stressed people in the water, they'll be splashing around. Um, their head won't be kind of under the water. So you can kind of tell when you're walking up, but you still don't know um, whether he's got an illness or something. So it's a little bit stressful, but it's also a relief that you found the guy and he's not still missing. With the emergency over, Dave's brother Chris decides the swell is unpredictable and dangerous today. So he decides to warn some daredevil fishermen that they are risking their lives on the rocks. Uh, you put a lot when you go rock fishing? A lot jacket. 
At last, one fisherman with good sense. With the high swell, Dave decides the conditions are perfect for training the rookie volunteers, a group of teenagers all aiming to become lifeguards. But they'll be training at the rocks. Little do they know, things are about to get sticky. We'll have to jump off the far side of Flat Rock, and the current's going to be going towards Bethel's. So we're going to jump in, float around the back of the Sugarloaf, and into Mary Bay. It's fun, right? Flat Rock is a popular fishing spot and the most treacherous part of the beach. Fishermen continue to ignore safety warnings, so these young volunteers need to learn how to work the surging bit of water. First time for these young kids. These young kids are only sort of 13, 14. Uh, the trainee lifeguards at the stage. Hopefully we get it right. Come on, mate. That's nice, I think we're good. Oh, mighty. Um, we're just going to jump these kids off, off the front of Flat Rock here. Um, you know, for a lot of these kids, it's their first go, so it'll be quite interesting. Um, the way the drift's going, we'll probably end up just shooting around the corner here. Um, you're scared? Oh, that's all right. Same deal, like, if you get into trouble, you know what to do, put your hand up. Just a nice big step into the water, OK? I'm very scared. You're going to jump off one at a time into the surf when I tell you to. Very scared. And you're just going to kick out there and float around the back, OK? OK, who wants to go in the water first? Miles. No, no, you guys come in on. Miles, at just 13, is aware of the dangers ahead and doesn't hesitate to volunteer. With all the trainees in the water, suddenly a rogue wave crashes on them. Rookie Miles is washed against the rocks and is struggling to stay afloat. He's been dragged along the rocks and is in real trouble. Shattering the group on land, Dave spots Miles in the churning seas and leaps to his rescue. Or does he? 